In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I work in both Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad to create dramatic images like this. So these are the photos that I'm going to be working on today. Um, these are shots that I took up in Glencoe um, in Scotland very recently. I'm really pleased with how they look. Um, what we can see is that I've done a focus stack. In one image, I focused close up on this ring here in the foreground, and on the other one, I focused on the boat and the mountains in the distance. Now, in this video, I'm going to combine those two. So I'm going to show you how I will take these images from Lightroom into Photoshop, merge them together, and do a few other little tricks that you may not have seen before um, and then bring them back into Lightroom. It is not the most simple process because Lightroom and Photoshop still don't talk to each other very well on the iPad. It's not like using it on the desktop so there's a couple of little workarounds that I've had to come up with. So let's just start off first of all by editing these shots. Um, I'm going to do some very brief edits uh, first of all. Um, I imported all of these into a uh, album um, uh, which I'll just call Glencoe 21. It's always important to use albums properly and to use ratings um, and everything else. It just helps you get a much better workflow. Um, I have done a longer video about the best workflow that I use for my professional photography. Um, I'll send, leave a link to that in the description below. It'll probably be on screen as well um, if you want to find out a little bit more about how I work. But um, let's dive into this now. And straight away, we've got these um, uh, the sort of vignetting from the lens in the top corners. So I'm just gonna go into the optics, enable lens corrections, and also remove chromatic aberration. Uh, I'm gonna slightly bring those highlights down and I'm gonna bring the shadows up just a little bit as well. But that is pretty much at this point, everything that I'm gonna do. But I wanna apply those to this image as well because we are, blur we are merging them together. They need to have a exact look. So what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna press on the three dots in the top corner, copy settings, make sure everything is ticked, press OK. We go across to this one, same button, paste settings this time, and now we've got basically the same image with two slightly different focus points. Now, as you can see, there is some shift in the image because I was hand-holding this, doing my focus stack, just focusing in different points, so there is a bit of movement. Not a problem, we can sort that right out in Photoshop. So, let's start off. What we're gonna have to do is two things in order to get these images on top of each other in one Photoshop document. With this one, the bottom layer, I'm gonna to go to the export. I'm gonna to go to export to files. I'm just gonna check that we've got our export settings. I want a TIFF image, largest dimensions, 16 bit, no compression. That's basically exporting at absolute maximum settings. So I'm gonna do that, export to files. I'll take a moment to render. I'm just gonna save it on my iPad anywhere. And on this one, we're gonna go open in or edit in Photoshop. On the desktop, what you can do is select two images and then and then uh, you can select load as layers in Photoshop and we want them as layers in Photoshop, um, but you can't do that. So you've got to save one and then reopen it later. Um, and actually I found that Photoshop is very, very difficult on the iPad and it just doesn't, it will load Photoshop, but it hasn't loaded the image. So let's go back in and just try that again. Edit in Photoshop. Okay, there we go. So it will eventually load that image, but sometimes it's a little bit weird. I have to go back and forth and it won't save things in quite the right way. And I'll show you later, there's a send to, send to Lightroom button, but more often than not, that doesn't do anything either. So I have to actually export the image and then re-import it manually into Lightroom. Anyway, we've got our background layer right now. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one I did. Um, this one's actually the top um, layer with the boat in focus, but that's not a problem. I'm gonna go these three buttons here. No, I'm not. This one here, the plus, the plus new thing. And um, I'm gonna click files. And this will be where our um, other one is. Now I have done a few today at five past 11. So it's this one. Um, we're gonna load that as a new layer and that's fine. Um, this one is our bottom layer with the, um, with the iron ring in focus. So we can just leave that as it is. So now we've got both those images as layers on top of each other. Um, I wanted this one as my bottom layer. No, I didn't. I actually wanted this as the top layer. So I'm just gonna drag that up to the top. And so now, there we go. 
This kind of in order. The one that's on the bottom is the one that's focused down here. So that it kind of makes sense. So it's always good to kind of understand how you're working um, in Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do, turn this layer on and I'm going to apply a layer mask. And that's this little button just here on the right, this little sort of cutout circle. I apply that and it's applied a white layer mask. Now, when you're working with layer masks, white layer shows that layer, it shows everything in it and black one hides it. What that means with that layer mask is that if I get my brush tool, as I've got there, paint with black and I make a nice large brush size, if I start painting, uh, uh, which one do I wanna paint away? I can't even remember. I wanna paint away the bottom half of the image. Of course I do. So as I start painting away on the bottom of this, as you'll see, it starts to hide that top layer and as a result, reveals the layer underneath. It's revealing that layer where we focused on the iron ring. So already we're most of the way there in doing our blend in that we've got the boat nice and sharp and in focus. We've got these rocks here in focus and the ring is in focus. But it's a little bit rough still because we've got some kind of issues going on wrong around here. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I think I might have just tapped there, I did. And I'm just gonna go around with a little bit more precision on here. This sort of mid-ground point was already a little bit out of focus anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that. I think really what I should have done is a focus point on the ring, a focus point on the mid-ground, and then a focus point of a distance. But I think combining three images in Photoshop is a bit of a pain. Photoshop on the desktop, it has a tool that automates it, just blends it all, and it works pretty well most of the time. Down here it's fine because we've just got this sort of black rock and you can't really tell um, which bit's in focus and, and which isn't. So I'm pretty happy with what I've done there. I don't think you'd really tell. Um, yep, that's worked out nicely. I'm just going to make sure that the rest of this down at the bottom is all in focus. And so that's great. If we just turn this layer on and off, we can see, yeah, it's shifted, but you wouldn't know unless you saw the edit. Suddenly that boat in the mountains are in focus, as is the metal ring in the foreground. That is great. So this is pretty much as far as we need to go with our focus stack. So what I'm gonna do is click on this and I'm gonna go merge down. Nope, that's not how I do it. Here it is, merge down, down here. So that's basically combined it now into one image. We don't need to do much, um, uh, anything else with our focus. I'm just considering that part done. However, I thought let's play around with this image a little bit more. One thing that I do want to um, play with is doing some perspective blending. I mean, it's not true perspective blending, I'm going to be faking it a little bit, because that bow and those mountains, using the wide angle lens, they look a little bit small in the distance, they're a little bit far, far away. And so I just want to kind of correct for that wide angle distortion just a little bit. And I'm going to um, long press on selection tools and I'm going to do the rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to roughly draw a box like this across that top part of the image. I'm going to go Command C on my keyboard to copy it. And then I'm going to Command V on a new layer. Great. So far, so good. That means that now if I press this tool, the transform tool, I can freely control this layer and I can drag it up and I can drag it a little bit taller. And as I do, it kind of emphasizes those mountains and again, correcting for that wide angle distortion. I'm at quite a low level looking up at those mountains. As a result, they look a little bit flat. So it's just kind of bringing that back into a slightly nicer shape and I can drag on this corner a bit more just sort of correcting. I mean, it's not just correcting, it's also emphasizing. This is not the most honest of edits, but you know, there we go. And I think that's fine. So as we look in now, we've got this, this line, this very obvious line um, of where those two images now meet. So we need to get another mask and I'm gonna get my brush back. And I want a fairly decent size and I'm also gonna turn down uh, I know that's not that 
the flow. Where's the flow? There we go, flow. Flow is great because that flow basically means the amount of percent that you're painting with each stroke. So if your flow is at 100%, then every time you make one stroke, it applies 100% of the brush. If it's at 10%, it applies 10%. That means you can naturally kind of build up the effect um, in a way that makes it a little bit more subtle. So I'm gonna bring it right down to something like 14%. And then with that brush, we can paint in. And because of that low flow, we can blend it in. So that line disappears and it becomes this seamless transition where you would have no idea. I've gone over the boat a little bit. So we just swap our colors and I just paint it back in. But I'm really happy if I'm zooming in, I cannot see on here. What's this? Is this anything? Yeah, I think that was just a little bit of weirdness. So let's just make a smaller brush. Uh, we can just go in like this. You know what? Let's do a bigger brush. There's always a lot of fine tuning when you do this kind of thing. So it's worth just spending some time going over it and making sure that you are happy with the result. Zooming in like this, pinch to zoom, move the image around. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent overall. I'm gonna swap those colors again, go down and just paint on this bit because it made it look a little bit washed out. That's great. Cool, okay, I'm happy with that. So if we go back and just twist that back into shape, we turn that off and on. Look at the difference that has made in bringing that boat much more into view. It's made those mountains much more dominant in the frame rather than being a little bit lost in the background. So with just those two techniques, the focus blending and the perspective blending, I think we've already got a really, really nice looking shot here, which is great. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take it back into Lightroom. This is the end of the Photoshop section. And here's the problem. So before we do anything else, I'm just gonna save this um, as a, as a uh, PSD file that I can then take into Lightroom because I do not trust that center Lightroom will work. So we click on the export button, publish and export. I'm gonna do it as a PSD export. It'll take a moment, even though this is the most recent iPad Pro with the M1 chip, it's still, it's not super quick when we're working at full resolution TIFF files. And I'm just gonna press save image. Hopefully, export complete, it's done it. Okay, fine, so I know that that has done. Because if I just press send to Lightroom, right in Photoshop format, again, it'll take a moment. Well, you know what, has it actually done it? <laughs> okay, fine. Sometimes it does, sometimes it works. Um, but almost all of the time when I did a, uh, a practice run um, on this yesterday, it wouldn't, it just didn't do it. Didn't communicate between the two at all. So it definitely seemed a little bit hit and miss. Anyway, fine. Had it not have done that, I'd have just gone to that first export I did in my photos gallery I'd have, um, and I'd have just literally imported it back into Lightroom and would have been here, so no problem. Let's start off with a crop. I wanna do four by five, because I wanna kind of bring, it's a little bit tall. Um, so I'm gonna bring it in like this. I'm gonna slightly straighten it up, putting that upper thirds right along the point where those mountains meet the water. And we've got the, um, the iron ring down here in the lower thirds. I think that looks really nice. So I'm gonna press done. Okay, we can start to do some edits. And when I'm editing in my on my iPad, it's all about speed for me, really. I wanna make sure that if I'm working on location, I'm not doing big edits where I take things in multiple layers over to Photoshop and do all kinds of things with them for hours on end. I wanna make sure that I'm working pretty effectively. And one of the things that I, um, I always will lean on is using my presets first. A variety of different presets you can go through and you can click on them and it applies them very, very quickly. Never be afraid of using presets in any of your work. They are a great jumping off point to give you some inspiration for your color toning for where you wanna go. The thing not to do is just apply it and then consider it done. Um, I really love how a lot of these different ones look. So it's great to just kind of click through, have a little look. I do like the blue of this, but we can add some blue. I'm gonna stick with pretty much the one I use most of the time, A6 Raw Half, I love it. Looks really nice here as well. Bring down those highlights a little bit, bring up those shadows. There's a lot of lost shadow detail that I wanna bring back here. Let's go to our colors because I think it's sort of added in a little bit of too much green for me. So I've just slightly increased that tint. 
And I think I might slightly bring down the temperature by just minus four. I think that's maybe all it needs. Just taking away a little bit of that warmth that it, it, that it had added. Okay, let's um, work on that sky a little bit because it's still a bit overpowering. And I'm gonna do that with a linear gradient. We'll just drag it over that sky. And then we can bring our exposure down slightly, maybe bring those highlights down a touch and maybe up those that contrast, just giving those clouds a little bit more of a boost. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna do another one down here, just to kind of bring down some of those shadows that we've just added in. But it's a little bit too dark on the ring. So what I can do is go to our eraser tool, get a fairly big brush, low flow, and just gently paint away that mask around the ring. It's subtle, but there is like a slight dip in this mask in the red area where the ring is. And I think that looks uh, pretty nice as a result. Before and after, before and after. I think it's already looking pretty decent. Let's go into our color mix. This is where I do a lot of my work. What about these greens? There's definitely a lot of greens in those trees in the background. And I, you know what, I don't mind that so far. I'm going to increase the luminance because it just helps those trees pop out just a little bit. The yellows, I want to dip slightly because we've got, at the moment on the rocks, sort of a, a, a sickly yellow-green tone, which um, I don't really love. So just by bringing that down to minus 40, it's taking that yellow much more into an orangey yellow, which I think really um, emphasizes some of these like sort of lichens on the rock and some of the seaweed. I think that looks really nice. Um, the blues, there's a lot of cyan in here and I don't really love it. So what I'm gonna do is just increase it more into the blue and then drop the saturation quite a lot. And then with the blues, I'm gonna bring that slightly down, minus nine in the hue. I'm gonna darken it with the luminance and maybe even just take a little bit of that saturation out as well. Something like that. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just doing it for what I, th I think feels kind of nice. But you know, obviously however you wanna edit your own shots is whatever you do. Um, but these mountains I still think need a little bit more work. So what I'm gonna do is get a brush, a fairly small size, what's my flow? Yeah, medium flow. And I'm just gonna sort of paint on here, maybe a little bit on these trees too. And I'm gonna increase that exposure slightly slightly increase the white, but I'm also gonna increase that clarity. Now, as I do, if I pulse this up and down, you can see how much more detail is coming out on the mountain. Let's zoom in particularly on this bit. Suddenly all of those like little ridges and, and crags start to become a lot more obvious. Um, and I think that's really nice. I don't wanna to go too far, otherwise it looks a little bit fake and weird. But somewhere around plus 30, um, I think is adding a really nice amount of detail there. If we go before and after, before and after, again, you can see exactly what that's doing. I'm gonna add this time a radial filter over the boat. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna increase that feather to 100% so that it blends much more naturally with the environment around it. And it's gonna slightly increase that exposure. Not a lot, which is gonna be a subtle shift. Otherwise it gets, you know, you just got a very bright ring. We don't want that, but I just want that boat to slightly stand out um, of the scene a, a touch more. Before and after, before and after. Always check your before and after. Make sure that, you know, you're going in the direction that you actually want. Um, and I'm going to get my brush tool again. And this time, I'm just going to do a little bit of dodging and burning on the, um, on the iron ring. So I'm just going to paint this in around here. Now... Some people always moan when I don't use the Apple Pencil on my um, on my iPad. I do have one, it's around here somewhere, but I actually don't really like using it a lot of the time in Lightroom because we've got these small sliders, it's all very kind of fine detail. And trying to actually tap on that sometimes, despite the fact that the Apple Pencil tip is narrower, I sometimes find it a little bit awkward. So I, just pref I just think I've got better control just using my finger on the screen and then you keep a little cleaning cloth handy so you can just give it a bit of a a buff up every so often. And it's just how I prefer to work. You know, it's fine. If you like doing it with the pencil, that's great. For me, 
I like to change it up a little bit. So anyway, as I boost up this exposure, look at what that's doing. It's not adding light that isn't there. This is exactly where the light is falling. You can see it around here, but it's just emphasizing it a little bit more and you can go quite a long way. Let's go to plus 1.64 exposure. I'm also gonna increase the clarity. And again, that's gonna help bring out some of that detail in all that old rust. Looks awesome. We press done, we go back and suddenly that iron ring becomes much more a part of the scene rather than it just sort of blending into you know blending into the rocks around it one thing that i do want to do is try and add a little bit of the autumn effect so that means taking it back into photoshop now i'm hoping but if i just do this and go edit in photoshop it will load this layer with my effects rather than just loading the one that we were working on before I mean, it's not doing it at all, is it? Here we go, let's try it again. Edit in Photoshop. Hooray, it is, there we go, cool, right. Uh, we're gonna go to um, duplicate layer and then onto that layer, we are going to add a clipped adjustment of levels. Darken this one down, ramp this one up. It looks ridiculous, fine. Layer one, copy. We're gonna go to this and Gaussian blur and we're gonna give it a good amount of blur and now with this layer if we take the opacity right down and start to build it up we're going to be applying that combination of contrast and blur and that is what the autumn effect is it gives this like haziness that can look really really good and in particular this image because there's a lot of very very fine details and i find that the high resolution of digital cameras can sometimes make all of that fine detail look a little bit too crisp so by just adding in this autumn effect if I just drag this up, you can see what happens if I pulse this up and down. We get this almost sort of soft focus glow, but you don't want to go too far. 7% I think is fine, just to add this little hint. If I turn this on and off, it's very subtle. Might not even be that visible in the YouTube video, I don't know. The compression might blur this a bit too much anyway. But I think... That looks really nice. That's all I'm going to do. So let's press center Lightroom. Let's see if it can do it twice in one video. I don't think it's done it. It's not done it. Let's go back into it. It just gave me an error, but then it went off screen too quickly. Okay, send to Lightroom. It's done it. This one, yeah. So we can go back. This is without the Orton effect. This is with. It's very, very subtle, but I do think it's... Um, I do think it looks really nice. Um, and now because this is basically a new image, if we want to apply any other presets on top and like layer up those effects, then we can do. You know, I do really like how this looks, that sort of more browny, darker tone. I really like the blue, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna add some blue in myself. Um, I do wanna just bring those highlights down again a little bit more, but boost those whites. That's just gonna add a little bit of contrast generally to the image. Which I think looks nice and let's go back into our color mix and now we've done some more edits I'm going to bring those greens down for a little bit too emeraldy green on those trees I think this allows it to blend with the image um, a lot more close color mix open color grading color grading is great because you can apply different colors in the shadows and in the highlights and that allows you to get a really nice cinematic tone so in this image I'm going to start dragging the shadows into the blue. And you can do this either by dragging from the center or you can drag from center a little bit and then grab the outside and move it around the color wheel exactly as much as you want, which is kind of handy because it allows you to really get the exact tone you want. And I want quite a deep blue, halfway exactly between cyan and purple. Something like this I think looks really, really nice. It's added to that sort of cooler cast into those shadows. I think maybe it's a bit much. So what if I just turn down that balance or turned up the balance? I don't want to add anything into the highlights because I like, if I did, then we're going to get a weird color cast in the sky. And I don't want that. I want the sky to stay like pure white around the clouds. So I think this, you can play around with the blending. That's how much of the effect is being applied. What happens if I do, yeah, so if I put it in the highlights, look, let's do it to an extreme. It only affects that sky. And I don't want that kind of color cast in the sky. I want a little tiny hint, saturation. 
nine, just a really small amount. Okay, so here are before and after, and I'm now considering the image done, by the way. Really pleased with how this looks. Before and after, before and after. So it's been quite a long journey to get here. Bearing in mind, we started with this. Um, you know, it, we had to focus stack the background with the with the ring. Then we did the change of the perspective of the mountains and the boat in the background. We brought it back into Lightroom. We did some tweaks. Then we took it back into Photoshop to do some autumn effect. Then back into Lightroom to apply our final grade and our final look. But all of that work has brought me to this image and I'm really, really pleased with how it looks. This was our straight out of camera raw. This is what we've brought it to. Um, I'm really, really pleased. Clearly, I think some work needs to be done in how Lightroom and Photoshop interact. There are a lot of pro features that I really could do with using, such as being able to select multiple images and open them as layers. Instead, I have to export my images from Lightroom, then go into Photoshop and load them into a new layer. It's not exactly an ideal way of working, but fine, I'm sure we'll get there in time. Um, but I do hope this video has been helpful to see how I will take my images from start to finish in Lightroom and Photoshop just using the iPad. But if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. Please do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.